Would you say I'm the number one recovering ACL patient of all time so far? Uh, that I've seen, yes. Oh, oh my God. Oh, my goodness. Of course you had to say that. Oh. He will never. Let's get this brace off. What's up, guys? Welcome to episode 101 of Dropouts. And, and guess who had an invasive surgery? Guess who had knives in him? Guess who had needles in him? Guess who had parts of his body re-put into his body to make sure his body's more bodying? I don't know if that makes sense, but it's going to make sense because I am about to send it to an interview we did with my ACL doctor. And you might be like, Zach, I don't know if I can handle science today. I just got out of school. It's the summer. Well, listen, listen to this podcast and how about you learn something? Okay. I was trying. I felt I'm not like, being aggressive. I just, I felt passionate. like Zach Galifianakis and uh, the hangover when he's doing all those like calculations when they're counting cards at the blackjack table. Anyway, right now we're back in LA about two weeks post-op, I guess you could say, and we're about to send it over. To uh, about a week ago, hit him with the what's up, B words. What's up, B words? Welcome back to episode 101. Super excited for you guys to learn a little bit about this. It's going to be a, a knee slapper. Dude, I want to fight you. Gotcha. Um, it, okay, this is a week ago. This is a week after my surgery, what you're about to watch. Um, it's very, very interesting. And if you don't think so, then. I will harm you. I don't know if no, what else. No, no I don't. I, I don't think yeah. you can threaten our. I can listeners. do whatever I want. It's my podcast. You know what I mean. I've done a hundred of these. If I want to threaten somebody, I'll threaten them. Well, Starting with you, shiny teeth. Right, well, this point. was cool. Um, All right, I'm cut to roll, it. Roll the intro. Ah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Welcome to Dropouts, ladies. We should do a freestyle <laughs> episode. What's up, guys? Um, and you said I was loud. My What's name up? is Zach Justice, and today you are here with my doctor. Ever heard of someone that helps people? This is Dr. Chad Lavender. Woo! Feel free to say hello. <laughs> glad, to ha- glad to be here, guys. Glad to be here. So, um, so a lot of you guys know about um, what happened to me on the blacktop. Um, oh, my gosh. I was 360 it's not that dunking serious. a basketball. And Full windmill Superman. I was doing a lot of things that were impressive for, uh, for an individual. Um, and I come down and I crack my knee, Dr. Lavender. You've, you've probably seen this a few times. I, I come down, I dislocate this bad boy, and ka goes the ACL. Boom. Meniscus, slurping away, medical term, fracture. Um, and so I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring you in hot in a second, but I just kind of want to set the scene for people that don't know. I'm in agony at this point. I may <laughs> never walk again. Those are thoughts I'm having. And I scour the internet for the best doctor I could find and I, I searched this way and I say is this the best doctor I said no oh, I, I don't like that one that one too much I I start googling this way oh I don't like that one and then I find myself uh in a little town in West Virginia and I found a I found a doctor named Dr. Chad Lavender and I, I gave you a call and I and I knew by your sweet southern voice that you were going to be caring not only for my knee but for 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 me and that that meant a lot. So it, it was my southern it was my southern draw, right? So that. Oh so, yeah. yeah. I mean, the do we all agree tone. on that now? A thousand. Percent. Okay. <laughs> it honestly Perfect. was because I grew up in the south, and once I heard that, I was like, "This is the man I want to <laughs> fix my knee." But to get straight into it, normally, how long does it take for someone to come back from an ACL? So anywhere from six to twelve months. You know, uh, a lot of folks I I would think uh, are releasing patients to. At nine months now. So, and that's nine even nine months. That's a cutting full edge. Length pregnancy. That's, that's how long it takes. It used to be a career ending yeah, injury for a lot of athletes. Because like, I would like, you know, I grew up watching the NFL and it was like you would hear people tear their ACLs and be like, okay, it season's done for sure. And then like they start questioning whether or not they're going to come back next year. And uh, still, one out of three that tear their ACL in the NFL are not playing. Uh, one out of three are playing at three years. Wow. Only one out of three. That's playing at so, three years? Yeah. So that, that says that two out of three are not playing at three years. So what that means is, although the public perception is it's not a career ender, mm-hmm. in many cases it is. Yeah. And so, it's, it's crazy. So I thought it was a career ender for my... Um, for your I mean, North we're, Hollywood we're, basketball days? <laughs> well, Yeah, I mean... Okay, sure, it's just pick up games, but it meant a lot to me, just as I assume your family means a lot to you. Also, we're filming this on... <laughs> You're equating Saturday morning court basketball... Yeah, pick, pick up, up basketball Today's to your um, 11th year anniversary to the love of your life, um, Michelle. Yes. And Why are we here? Yeah, we are, <laughs> what are you doing? Let's start there. Why are we here? Do you, do you feel bad for her? Did you, did you forget? What happened? No, it's just like did I posted today. She's supportive. Okay, okay, good. You know what I mean? That's so good to hear. She's she's right yeah, over here, yeah. smiling she's, ear to ear. She loves happy. you still. Yeah. <laughs> and and right um right before this podcast started, he said, uh, 
hey, do I look good? And and your wife responded with, you always look good. And that's oh. and that's love. That's 11 years of love. And it hasn't dwindled a bit. No. I, <laughs> Not I, one my bit. mom, she's been divorced twice. I've seen love dwindle. Oh, God. And yours has I have hasn't. also seen love dwindle. But back to the you knee. Know? So you get the call from me. We talk on the phone. You ask me what I do. Not even just as a friend. Not even as a, really a doctor at that point. And I told you I, uh, I have a podcast. So you watch it. And you're watching it down in your basement. What happened after that? So my daughter walks. I'm just watching it. We watching la- it here. I was watching it. I was laughing, and I was. I said, "Man, these guys, they're great." And uh, but in walks my daughter. She's 15, and she knew every single podcast. She knows everything about your lives. So oh my god! It was, uh, yep. You called Lauren, out now, Lauren. Lauren come over here and say Lauren, hi. come over here and say hi. Come here. Be on the yeah, podcast. Yeah. She. Lauren just had to film a TikTok for me, and here, I will say it was here, one of the right, more. Come here, them. squat down a little bit. It was one of the more embarrassing moments. This is of my this life. is Lauren. Um, she only likes me and doesn't. You don't like who do you, do you hate more, Jared or Indy? What team are you on? Neither. Lauren. I like all of y'all the same. Well, that's not true. <laughs> that's a cop out. Um, <laughs> well, we spent more so, time together, and you're not going to say that I'm the favorite. She okay. worked yeah. for you. She did not spend <laughs> hey, time with you. <laughs> hey, we had a lovely time. Yeah, we did. You okay. can't force someone to say we have. You can't yell at someone and say we had a lovely time. Excuse me, did we? Yeah, Thank she you. did say. She forced to say that. <laughs> she said, "I've been with Indiana since when? What was the show? Chicken, Chicken Girls. Girls. I was the first fan. Without me, yeah. there wouldn't be a you or you. Okay? Wow. She didn't even know about either of you. Thank you very much. But now she that would you have Jerry Bear music is who do you obviously like the most. Don't say Jerry. That's a cop out answer. How is that a cop out answer? Because you're a safe bet. What you're eliminating all <laughs> you the answers, but bet. you. No, I'm not. I'm if I was the gonna best say, bet. if I was gonna say, who in this room should I pick as a favorite? Like I'd say you. Thank you, because I'm the best. No. Well, I'd say well. Dr. Chad Lavender for helping me with my knee. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen. Thanks. Thank you so much for coming on the on the show, um, Dropouts Podcast. You've probably seen it before because it's your favorite show of all time because of Zach <laughs> Justice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because of Zach Justice. Oh my God! Thank you so much. Wow. Objection, Your Honor. And I uh, gave hearsay, you, hearsay, I gave led you to top secret information at dinner. That's crazy. <laughs> I'll remember that. I She's will spiteful. remember. That. I would never. If 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 you cross me, I won't think about it again. Unlike her, <laughs> and I'm sorry that. She's victimizing you. I'm sorry that she's doing a lot of things to you that you shouldn't that shouldn't be done to a lovely woman like yourself. And a good job on making the dance team. Probably forgot that happened. You didn't make it last year. That's all I have to Whoa! say. Oh, sorry, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, but it is. Uh, oh my gosh. Just, that just happened. Oh goodness. Okay, get out of here. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm so sorry, but you made it this year. So, so we're now so happy for you. <laughs> I invite you guys in my house. Now you got my daughter crying. <laughs> you know what? You know what? Indy doesn't get lasagna tonight. No. That's all I'm we're eating lasagna. <laughs> you knew we were eating lasagna. <laughs> okay, so so like you were saying, your daughter knew the podcast. And then, and then you're like, oh, I got to fix this kid's knee because I got to do it for my daughter. So, well, I think uh, you know we had some great conversations. Uh, yeah. And number one, I figured out that you were really highly, uh, highly motivated, really athletic. I'll put that in there. <laughs> Thank you for saying that you because say that is all really we're going to uh, hear. Broke his ego. Has a has a big athletic history and all that kind of stuff. So. You know, I thought you were a great candidate to to do it, and uh, and we get a, about eight percent of my patients are from outside of the area and yeah. outside of the state. So we have a, you know, as you know, we have a pro- progress that we go through with with out of out of town patients, and it's just about communication. It's no different than if you're down the street. So um, really got to know you. I, I really like to get to know you in that situation, and 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 see that you're really interested, right? So, yeah. I mean, I I. I don't cry a lot in my life, but when I found out, like when the initial injury happened, I bawled like a baby because I knew what happened. I knew I had torn things in my leg and that was always kind of my biggest worry in life because sports are the only things that get me out of my head. They're my only thing that kind of keeps my brain um, not from being sad all the time. So once I I was researching anyway, I was researching snake oil ways to get my (laughs) knee back tomorrow. But um, I I found your method, and I uh, you know at first I was a little unsure, like a lot of people are. I was like, is this too good to be true? Because you've had success with people coming back faster than nine to twelve months, and I just couldn't see myself being sidelined for that long. And um, I watched some like promotional videos. I was able to get in contact with you. We had amazing conversations, and you didn't seem like a fake person. You didn't seem like someone that was trying to sell me something that wasn't true. And you weren't selling me anything at all. Um, like I I came out here and and 
you treating me like family and uh, like nothing means more to me than that. Like you called, you called my sister to talk to her, to tell her what the procedure was. You called my mom to talk to her. Granny. You talk, you talked to granny. Like you made everyone in the family love you. I felt like you were trying to marry me at one point. I was like, why are you, <laughs> why are you trying to get on me, get on in on this so much? I was like, you're an 11 year relationship, but, um, <laughs> but oh it's fine. God. But I think, I think the thing I would say, you know, is number one, it's all about support system. I told Indy that, you know, uh, she was really important in this and will continue to be um, because you have to have that support system to go through something like this. And and not only that, but uh, you really have to get to know your patient. And I really do more, honestly, tempering expectations than I do building them up. We've yeah. been researching this for four years. We have level one data to support what we say and, and, and our results. My job is to tell you, here's the things that could go wrong, and here's what we got to do to prevent that, right? So, Can you kind of talk about, so I came in, I had an ACL tear and a meniscus tear. Can you talk about kind of- And? And a couple fractures. Can you talk about what what was the old method of maybe doing an ACL meniscus repair? Yeah, so, I mean, the older method, or I guess you could say still Still standard, yeah, standard method would be doing a patella tendon, more of an open approach with a larger incision. Okay, where's the patella tendon? The patella tendon is right below the kneecap. Okay, so you take, basically you take that out and you... The zipper, if you will, that's what you call it, you know, the zipper most people will call it, but... um. So you take a bone block on each side versus what we do is take the quad tendon right above the kneecap through a small incision, as you, as you know. Um, and then you get into the biologics that we use and the brace that we put in your knee and, and all that. You know, that's, those are the key differences is that we found a way to actually take stem cells from your, your shin bone. Oh, I, this was the know. coolest part yeah. to me. So you told me while I was under. We actually have video we can intercut as well, but mm-hmm. you took stem cells out of my shin bone. You were able to spin them. I guess you could say, what does spinning them mean? Centrifuge. And, and what is, what so is that? Like literally spinning so them. So what you do is you basically take the bone marrow, you harvest the bone marrow with the aspiration, and we have video of that uh, during your case. And then that gets centrifuged and spun to where you get a certain coat that has the stem cells. And then for people that don't know what, so then you inject the stem cells back into where? Uh, the tunnels right next to where the graft goes. And so you're putting them right there into the bone to where you want that to actually fertilize the graft. So uh, it does it, you, sorry, does the stem cell make the bone um, repair itself quicker? Well, the, we, the hypothesis is that having stem cells and a bone graft there next to that graft, that it heals in faster uh, and more complete. And so we've done CT scans that have shown that. Gotcha. So I, I feel like a lot of times nowadays, stem cells is kind of like a, a catch-all term in the medical field. So what exactly are they and w- like what are they doing? So there's different stem cells. The type we're talking about is mesenchymal stem cells or mm-hmm. better term stromal stem cells. Uh, but, you know, they're progenitor cells that can obviously become different tissues. Gotcha. The key is, the key is, that you're using his biology, you're putting it where it needs to go. You know, we're not just spraying it into the knee like Mm -hmm. has been done before with PRP and some of those things. So we're taking it, putting it where we want it to go. And then we also, one of the major keys is we add the internal brace, which actually provides stability at uh, time zero. So at the kind of the standard version of the ACL, um, when you repair it, there is no internal brace normally? Correct. Yeah. I mean, uh, the internal brace has been around for maybe four to five years in the ACL world. Uh, it's being done more and more, I think. Um, and it's been part of our technique and our research here at Marshall for four years. And then w- what part did you specifically um, design in this whole process? So what we developed uh, is the method, the methodology of actually taking the cellular components and mixing them with a bone graft and getting them to stay arthroscopically into the tunnel. Uh, that's what we published several times, and then we also combined using the internal brace with that technique, and that's what we've stuck. And how many um, of these, using this technique, how many ACLs or something similar have you done? Over 300. Uh, I've done over 300 uh, in the last four years, and you know, other surgeons around the country have adopted the technique. I mean, every city that I travel to and speak, uh, there's more and more surgeons that come up to me and are really pleased with their results. So that's what that's what's exciting to me. No, and you're you know? ha- you're having honest proof that people are coming back 
way faster than than normal. I mean, I I know you guys are still testing and you can't officially put that out yet, but I'm just from things I've seen, you guys are having people come back a lot faster, healthier than I've ever seen. But it, do you want to allude to maybe the backlash of putting that out? Have you ever like other people that don't believe it? Good to too good to be true. Lots of backlash. Yeah. I mean, but I think you, you know, said you're in, a, you're in a Twitter beef every other day. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's tough. You know, I think I don't know crit- critique. I think uh, the proper crit- critique of of results and things of that nature. You know, to specifically what I can tell you in our clinical trial. You know, at 12 weeks, the knees that had this technique were 80 percent of the opposite knee versus the other technique that we did. They were thirty five percent. Wow! So, wow. so that's a functional test. So that's not just how do you feel. That's actually we tested them blindly. So we had them do hop test and perform, you know, function. So uh, that speaks for itself. But we also are careful to temper expectations uh, as we continue to do proper scientific research. Well, that's what you did with me because I mean I I saw a lot of the things you guys published of how well people were coming back from this. And I got excited. I was like, "Can I come back this fast?" And and every single time, you're like, "I, you want to under promise, over deliver." And mm-hmm. and um, so that was. So I got here. I want I want to walk into my surgery a little bit. You know, I got here. I was uh, I was feeling good. You know, you had me. You had me feeling good. I was ready to get cut. And uh, <laughs> actually, no, we got it on our red eye. Actually, terrible. you were you were worn out, right, guys? We I mean, so, like when I met you guys for the first time, I felt so bad because I was so insanely tired because keep in mind i am a nurse and a mother right now i've got a baby baby puppy to take care of and a pretty much man child to take care of because the first like what's up first couple (laughs) how you doing no i need to explain what i've had to deal with and i need the dropouts listeners to absolutely understand we'll get into after because we got to go surgery and then we'll do Do surgery and then i'm gonna do post because boy do i have some stories okay so i started um with the surgery i go in that morning and, you know, I'm talking to the nurses a little bit. We're getting, we're getting to know each other. You walk in. You say, you ready, big boy? I said, I'm ready. I'm ready to get after this. And um, I they, signed your knee. You signed my knee. You said it's going to be worth more one day. Don't, <laughs> don't wash it off. That's yeah. what I said. Get it tattooed. I, did, I will say this. I will take up for myself. I did not say drive immediately. I said, you can go play GTA and drive a car immediately. <laughs> um, not he, drive an actual vehicle. He's referencing, I posted a couple TikToks that got like 26 million views. So I think everyone, it was after anesthesia. I um, I got a little loopy. I said some things to some nurses. He got heinous in front of his granny. Let's roll both <laughs> of them really quick. I beat it. You beat what? The worst medical. What did I have? You had an ACL tear and a meniscus tear. Did you guys cure my depression as well as my knee? I wish we had, but we didn't. We're just going to keep that going? (laughs) Perfect. So who's driving? So I'm going to, I'm going to drive the first like five minutes. No, he's not. He's not driving. And then we're going to trade off. You won't be driving. Well, the doctor told me right before I went under, he's like, make sure you drive on your way home. And I was like, Dr. Lavender, that can't be correct. And he said, it is. We don't trust anything. You expect to drive the vehicle. You know, I've always wanted a DUI. Just Zach, Zach. I'm gonna be honest. You're a very qualified nurse, and you've been doing a great job today. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> and I'm gonna talk to reception, and guess who's getting raised? <laughs> Not you, because I don't have any pull here. But I will write a strongly worded letter using words that are that are Harvard level. So I guess you're welcome. <laughs> do you feel any pain? I've never felt pain in my entire life. But do you feel pain? Because I'm so strong. Do you feel pain? <laughs> Have you ever heard of toxic masculinity? You're Are you wearing experience underwear? Experience it. I am elite. I feel like the Thor of this hospital. You're not wearing underwear, are you? My wiener is out. <laughs> and all the nurses came by and said, wow. <laughs> they said, that's a good one. At one point, all the nurses came in because I was naked and they just started bowing down at it. <laughs> and apparently, my wiener is now the leader of this hospital. Zach, can you imagine talking about his wiener? Granny. Your granny's right here. Granny knows. She used to change my diapers. She used to bow down as well. They didn't give me any anesthesia. They said, just bite down on this towel and you'll be fine. Yeah, yeah, we've talked to the doctor. I'm super strong. They said, they yeah. said I'm the best patient they've ever had in medical history. In medical history? They said I'm, I'm not the goat, but I fit the description. And then the nurse, get this, me and the nurse are hanging out. I've got my knee hurt. 
and she's like, do you want to get in a whip and nay nay dance battle? And I said, ma'am, I just had surgery. She said, oh, so you a punk. So I stood up and I whipped my nay nay, I whipped and nay nay myself into first place. Nice. I want to get you dressed now. Okay, step back for a second. I need to show you something. Oh my God. Have you so heard of 2014? Yeah. Because that was a big thing. I'm getting you dressed now. Cool. I was prescribed 64 nay nays before I can leave. Zach. I don't want to do it either. Zach. I'm not the goat, but I fit this description. description. And then, uh, yeah, so those videos happened. Um, and then, did you get a little bit of flack for that or? Well, no, I mean, people understood. They knew I wasn't that crazy that I told you to drive. But you know, <laughs> I'm just clearing that up for anybody out there. But they um, they sent you, you said you got a lot of texts from people. Oh, yeah, all over. I mean, it was amazing the amount of text uh, that we got and, and just how, how funny they thought you are, you know. I got so many DMs from your patients of people saying, wait, is this Dr. Lavender from, why are you in West Virginia doing this? I was like, this is where cutting edge science is, baby girl. This is where it's happening. I mean, what a place. Like, I, I said, wait, I, wait, I did say, did you like him? Did he do a good job without even like, without leading the, the witness? And <laughs> um, they said they were amazing and, and they couldn't have had better care. So you're doing a good job, I guess. Are well, we? I think, so Jared, you know, I don't think he ever thought he was going to be in West Virginia um, <laughs> nope. filming a podcast after <laughs> surgery, right? No, so, that did not. That's, nope. that's not on the, the typical list of things you're going to be doing, right? So, no, I, d I didn't look at this kid and be like, we're going to be in West Virginia getting <laughs> ACL surgery, you know? <laughs> so, but, oh, dude, anesthesia is, that's some hard stuff. I don't remember most of the day. I do. You want to recount the day? I We've remember. We've got videos of this, too. I remember all of it. Like, it was currently happening um i went to go pick you up in the hospital yeah you were loopy on anesthesia you were saying some heinous things in front of your granny in front of your sweet sweet nurse tammy i had to sign all your discharge papers and overwhelmingly state that you were not driving and i was driving i ended so, up driving <laughs> no he did not he did not drive and then um oh i skipped over the part where i had to get him dressed did you see things yes i did were you impressed <laughs> oh no I, I will not comment gotcha but i was That's really yeah. struggling i'm gonna be honest i was really struggling to get your shorts on and try to keep you modest and so tammy came in and she was like i got it i'll give you a hand and showed me how to put on your shorts and um and then we got home getting That's you tammy up the stairs you. was terrifying i thought we we're gonna lose you and in your mind you were the most stable human being of all so um Still am. we got you in bed <laughs> finally got you home and I've had to do things this week that I never thought I would have to do with Zachary Christian Justice. Did I have to take his pee out of his room multiple times? Could have been you, ladies. Could have been you. Yes, I did. <laughs> yes, I did. Um, because he obviously can't get up too much. He has a little a little pee bottle that little he pee pees bottle. in, and then I take it it's out. Medical. That's not a little pee bottle. That's it's a, a jug. It's and a he jug. Fills that fills thing it. up. Um, did Man. he accidentally I'm hydrated? No, no, no. I need to talk about this. What? Did he accidentally spill some of it over, and did I have to clean it up? I feel like it brought us closer together. Um, I'm not sure. gonna call <laughs> Doctor Lavender over. He's already done enough. <laughs> I mean, look, I have been pee cleaning up dog pee and dog Human poop pee? for quite some time now and i never thought i would have to do that for you zach okay um off the topic of urination um <laughs> oh we're not even into the part where i had to help you shower but also keep my eyes half closed too because you're well, like i need privacy you seen from putting on his shorts that's true so but he was like give me privacy well, you're and also then, begging you're like please can i can i no, you? And, and, I was then, like, and then because he wasn't eating enough with his medication he was like i really need food and i had to bring him a peanut butter jelly in the shower what what did i tell you after surgery about how important support, support system it's the most important okay so it really is. i would like to say that i was the most important part in all of this and, and um, i, like I kept say, him fed honestly, clothed i kept his medication regime Indy, i want to say something honestly um i want to say you're welcome for what you saw so <laughs> oh my god <laughs> you're welcome pg-13 oh. yeah pg-13 <laughs> we didn't cross the, we didn't yeah, cross we the line did, there we, we danced the on line. it didn't we <laughs> that's borderline pg right we are there. in a family home right now um Dr. Lavender's family home and with children nearby. One of them's doing parkour over there. I don't know if you guys have been seeing it, but he's Look, doing he's flips. He's like, that's me. I thought I knew my grandfather better than anyone. And then one day we were chatting and I heard a story I'd never heard before. That got me wondering, how many other stories don't I know? That's why I got my grandfather story worth. 
Storyworth is an online service that helps you and your family member connect through sharing stories and memories and preserves them for years to come. So every week, Storyworth emails your family member of choice um, a thought-provoking question of your choice from a vast pool of possible questions. Each unique prompt asks questions you've never thought of, like, what is your uh, fondest childhood memory or have you ever feared anything in your life? What is your biggest fear? Just things that you wouldn't normally know how to ask that special person in your life. So you got to get those enriching answers. Those are good questions. I've really enjoyed reading my dad's answers to these questions. I've discovered stories and memories I've never heard and learned new things and stories that I never really knew. Oh, one story that I heard that was kind of crazy with my grandfather was that he used to work for the mob in Las Vegas. Like what? Yeah, in the 50s. He moved there. I never knew. I was like, hey, who was uh, your favorite employer? He's like, I don't know my favorite, but get get this. And then just went into working for the mob. I thought it was kind of crazy. Grandpa Larry. Grandpa Larry, huh? One really cool thing that I learned about my dad that he just kind of dropped out of nowhere was that um, he was friends with the 1996 Chicago Bulls. Like I'm talking like Scotty Pippen, like LeBron James. Nope. nope. <laughs> oh, Michael, Michael Jordan. You're, Jordan. The, you're the basketball guy. Michael Jordan, Scotty Pippen, like some of the greatest players of all time that he was just like, oh yeah. Like I was in Chicago for a while and I just became friends with them. Just, I was like, that's what, what you do in it's Chicago. My dad's first wife was an Olympic basketball player. So well, that does it. After one year, Storyworth compiles all those questions and stories, including photos into a beautiful keepsake book. The whole family can share for generations. So give all the fathers in your life a meaningful gift you can both cherish for years to come. Storyworth. Right now for a limited time, you can save $10 on your first purchase when you go to storyworth.com slash dropout. That's S-T-O-R-Y-W-O-R-T-H dot com slash dropouts to save $10 on your first purchase. Storyworth.com slash dropouts. Back to the show. Um, so do you want to talk about kind of how you prepare for surgery? Because I thought it was kind of interesting oh. and and funny and and there's a certain way that that you get a little hyped in the surgery room and maybe talk about my case in particularly like what you did yeah so you know um i think well so first of all honestly it starts two three days beforehand like i told you you know a lot of hydration sleeping well and this is, on, the week. this is on your end right yeah yes. yeah yeah for me so honestly it's like an athlete you know i mean you're you're you're, you're trying to drink as much water as you can eat well sleep well concentrate and then the day of surgery, though, it's, you know, a lot of EDM music on the way to the OR. <laughs> like, nice. you know, wake yourself up. You should get hyped. Yes, exactly. You're getting after it. You have to. Well, I mean, you told me if this yeah. doesn't work out, you might be a DJ. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, I think like DJ Khaled, right? Like, uh-huh. who, is what, that's what I think. You know, you say one one word or something during a song, and then you just, you know, that, that's the life, Lavender. Right? That's the life, there right? So, uh, but, you know, I think, um, so, so, yeah, that's that's my routine. I get there, um, you know, and you run through the case multiple times in your head, and uh, and then everything goes as planned, you know. And then you're a football player. Can you talk about what you do pre-op? So, <laughs> I would say this, you know. Okay, so good way to phrase it. So here, here's 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 the way I would phrase it. Uh, many of you out there may not realize you have to do a timeout before surgery. Did you know this, Jared? No. So, I, yeah, what what does that mean? So a timeout is it's a safety precaution. Okay. So you sit there and say. This is Jared. We're going to do his right knee ACL. And then everybody goes around the room and says something like anesthesia will say, and we gave ANSEF uh, antibiotic, right? Blah, blah, blah. Okay. And I've been known to do really, really thorough timeouts. Like I bring (laughs) up the MRI. I'm like, let's scroll through. You know, I mean, I, I think that's an important part of it. But I think I propose like for big sports cases, like in the future that you should like do a really special timeout where you can like uh, you know put the fluorescent lights on, roll the Chicago Bulls music, and like say, <laughs> and now coming in from North Carolina for a right knee ACL, you know. So he does uh, this before. I'm just I'm passed out on the table. He's having the time of his life. I think this is. We did not do that, but I'm saying I think it would be funny. If we but did. one day, but one day maybe one of these you got to call him in like a starting lineup. I think this oh, yeah. that's yeah. great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. That's I think what that's you need great. And then in the OR, you said you listened to a lot of Drake. Oh yeah, so heavy, <laughs> dude. No that, question. That heavy. is hilarious. He's just doing the two Z slide. With <laughs> the, <laughs> with me. He's just like, right. Foot, I can't dance now. Can I, um, all I can imagine is just like 
hotline bling playing while you're just <laughs> so there's a there's a Scalpel, uh, please. what is it the uh, <laughs> hip hop barbecue that's a great channel okay and then obviously the Drake you know but the slower Drake. Oh uh, yeah, you know, yeah. not the real fast. No, 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 Houston, Atlanta, Vegas. Nah, you know, a little slow. A little drag. Marvin's room. Yeah, maybe Ooh. exactly. Maybe you cr- oh, yeah. exactly. Yeah, something. Well, like that's that. not good for your, your marriage yeah. if he's listening to that. That's all Dude, I he's say. getting <laughs> freaky in the operating room. No, PG thirteen. Remember? <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So okay, so you slice open my knee, and what'd you find? So uh, small meniscus tear, and the ACL uh, was completely torn. And uh, no major cartilage issues, uh, and ex- exactly what I expected of yeah. him. Basically, he knew he knew what so. was going on in it. So you you fixed me up, you sewed me up, you we headed out, and then it was kind of the journey because I've heard the first two days, or you've heard I'm sure some horror stories of the first two days just being very painful. Um, luckily, in my case, honestly, wasn't too bad. The second day, I had a really tough moment because I had to do, um, I had to dangle my leg over the bed to kind of get. Um, extension, I guess, was what, or what would flexion. you flexion, yeah. flexion. So, what what are the initial things that you're looking for in that first week period from from a patient? Like, what are some boxes you want to check? You know, honestly, just somebody that uh, takes care of their incisions uh, and keeps their straightness of their leg. I mean, that's the most important thing. Um, I will point out, you know, you didn't shed any tears. I, I mean, so even even initially, as soon as surgery was over, never never saw him. You know, he was. He was exactly like he was in that video. Because so, I believe the medical term is uh, d- a double, double tough. tough. I was telling any nurse that could listen. I was like, <laughs> listen, tough. I'm double tough. <laughs> yeah. And I was honestly, I was trying to take on their problems. I was like, what have you been through today? <laughs> yeah, I just went through this, but I can handle this. Are you doing okay at home? I took through a lot of uh, a lot of nurses off the edge. It, it was a good day. It was a good day for all of us. <laughs> Jared, we're actually trying to. I think we're going to sample his like blood and mm-hmm. see what makes him so tough. You know, yeah. Before yeah. he leaves, I think we really need to do a research project on his blood and. Well, I want to. You'll, you'll find, God, a, you'll find a special gene, and then that will be named the double <laughs> tough gene. The double tough gene. He has already be been talking about the, that, the justice gene. gene. The that's justice the true gene. breakthrough we need. Yep. No, but um, I mean, not toot my own horn here, but do you? Sh- should we? Should we, when do we show the knee? I mean, yeah, not to, should, you, we, should we cut to that video? Oh, yeah. All right, we're going to cut to a video. Okay, so wait, can we talk about how normal patients usually are? Let's say this I, as a disclaimer. I didn't tell him to do anything you're about to see. And almost uh, you told me the opposite, yes. not to do this. Okay, good. Um, also, can you talk about, before we show the clip, what a normal patient, uh, this wasn't even a week into post-op, should look like? So, uh, so let's talk about that. So at two weeks, uh, and many of you out there maybe have had ACL, so you understand this, but at two weeks, they'll come in in a brace, um, difficulty raising their leg up. Usually they can't do that by then, uh, meaning doing you know, a straight leg raise, usually on crutches completely. and Not, may, not very much weight bearing? No, not, not very much uh, weight bearing at all. And then also very minimal flexion so probably 50 to 60 degrees sometimes patients will get to 90 degrees by then but that's at two weeks okay so that's at two weeks so let's roll the clip all right here we go push it down there's your 125 I'm getting one 130 right there 130 good job 131 Oh, baby girl and baby boys, we did it. Huh? That wasn't even at a week. I don't Not think. even at a week. We're at a hundred, what, 131 degrees uh, flexion? Yes. We're at uh we're doing high knees. We're walking upstairs. No, he told me you, not to. You had a full uh, range of motion on the bike? Full range of motion on the bike. You never see that. Okay, I, I'm going to, listen, I'm not trying to, and you know me. I'm a humble guy. You've, you've seen oh. this the entire time. Couldn't be more humble. But <laughs> would you say I'm the number one recovering ACL patient of all time so far? Uh, that I've seen, yes. Oh, oh my god! Oh my goodness! Of course, you had to say that. Oh. He will never. Let's get this brace off. He Do- oh, here we die go. On here this we go. Is Jared. this doctor's orders? <laughs> Is this doctor's oh, orders? Here we go. Look at this, guys. Okay, standing up. Oh my gosh! Are you kidding me? And this is what day? This is, is this? about a week. This is Monday. One week. One, one week. Yeah, one just week. over. Week. Just is today over one week? week? Are you kidding me? Look at me. Look this at me is, going. This is 10 days. I challenged him to sprints earlier. He didn't want to. He's like, ah, you got to take care of it. But that's pretty, I mean. The fact that you can even get out of a chair, comfortable pain, walking around like this, and you saw the video, I mean, uh, it makes me nervous, right? So, <laughs> but if nothing, like this is like, like how far is he going to push this? You yeah, know, he will push uh, it as far as humanly possible. But yeah. this is such a testament to what you've created. Like when you see, 
when you okay when, well, first of all when, when you, you see, see the, greatness when like you see this. greatness <laughs> but no no just when you see thigh down greatness like do you look at yourself in the mirror that night and you after sending you the video and you're like we did things today i have a passion for this um <laughs> if you can't tell like i want to know how people are doing literally daily and and weekly and uh and follow all of those early outcomes you, you know, checked in and, with me probably three times a day yeah it's yeah. it's and because well there's there's different things you check on how are your incisions how's your swelling how's your motion how's your pain you know all those things are important and we we have a, a huge staff at our office and we really try to do a good job at that but i think um yeah you're doing outstanding and um it makes me think like uh, you know, if we had an NFL player, where would it be? You know what I mean? Whoa, whoa, whoa. You think, You've already got peak of evolution. I mean, yeah, you don't I, mean, need an NFL I know player. that you're an outstanding athlete, but you really think in the no, back of your head. No, but that's like definitely no, like, definitely. it's yeah. definitely like a, a topic to, to bring up. Like the fact that he's already this far, it's like, I reckon you could get, I mean, this is me speaking without anything, but with the professionalism of those athletes, you could probably get them back in the same season that they, you know, hurt their knee, like that, which is, that's really Just amazing insane. you say that. So that's our goal is to eventually get to a five, maybe four and a half to four month recovery. I mean, that's crazy. Like that is crazy. That that's what that's the the goals of our future research. To be like completely honest, like I was I don't know a whole lot about sports or surgeries and I've just kind of been the the one to help him out through all of this. Um, and when he told me that he was thinking about going to West Virginia and, you know, getting the surgery, I was super skeptical because I was like, you're going to go to another state. Like, you know, this is, you know, big deal. It's obviously the expense of, you know, traveling and staying here for two weeks is insane and everything, right? And so, but he was super, super set. And after seeing some of the videos, I was like, if this is what you're comfortable with, you have to be comfortable. And I was honestly still expecting a really, really long road of just agonizing pain for months. I was really expecting him to not even be able to walk for, you know, three, four weeks and everything. But to see this, like, as a outsider that knows nothing is insane. Like, my dad has had you know, I've explained to you 27 operations on his knee. He was a professional football player and tore his ACL and it was career ending for him. Like it was done. Like that was back in the eighties done. So, um, no, yeah, this like, is crazy. I've, I've, I was in physical therapy. Um, I'm at physical therapy right now at Marshall health and just, I, I went in there and someone is about on the same timeline as me, but they had the traditional ACL, um, Surgery. treatment. Yeah. And they can't lift their leg. Like they are even a little bit past me, can't lift their leg. At what point with the traditional method are the things that I'm doing because of what you've done? Like what, how far is that usually? So we've, we've done a lot. It's not just the, the biologics and the internal braids. We also published a new quad closure about a year ago, which yeah. really helped with the quad raise. Yeah. Uh, we've noticed that people get their quad raise and their extension back really a lot faster because what I was seeing with the old patella tendon uh, is that it would take sometimes four to six weeks to fully get your mm -hmm. knee straight raise, you know, the, the straight raise again. And, um, so yeah, you're right. I mean, it, it, when you combine, I think just good quality, you know, surgical techniques with motivation and I, and I keep going back to that because honestly, a lot of it is about motivation and support. Yeah. You know? definitely. I mean, I, I learned, I'll say this, I learned really quickly, uh, about six months into practice no matter how good a surgeon you think you are or how good a surgery you do, and we talked about this, if somebody goes home and does no rehab and, you know, bends their knee and never moves it, it's not going to be a good outcome. Yeah. So you can't over, you know, you can't over analyze that. I mean, I think that's a really important part of it. Definitely. Yeah, 100%. I mean, I never thought I'd be doing the things that were, that you were able to give me to do in the first week. I mean, uh, and Tom has been phenomenal as part of the PT team. You came to PT uh, a couple days ago and he was a little nervous. He's like, are we, uh, yeah, I guess we'll, you can do that if you want. Uh, maybe, um, but I didn't tell you, but I did, but um, no, but. So that's, that's a good point yeah. that you're bringing up because uh, was t you're talking about Tom Bomaggio, who's uh, doing a great job with you and also, you know, coming in on the weekends and things. And so the point you bring up though, is how far can you push it? Yeah. And, uh, you know, we just brought in an excellent PhD here who really is going to look closely at, at strategically the biomechanics of the knee and, ha you know, what is safe for us to do. Um, we currently haven't released people before the six-month time point to do pivoting cutting, 
But uh, what we really need to find out is what patients are safe to do more earlier on. Can I can I ask a question? What do you think it was about? This is just going to boost your ego even more. (laughs) What do you think it was about Zach in general that helped him recover like he's recovering? I don't know. To be honest, (laughs) I mean, like (laughs) you know, I mean, I think um, I think he's he's hot. So I think there's several things. His injury was a while back, so he's had time to get over the initial injury. You guys know how much pain he was in, and he'll mm-hmm. tell you. I mean, from doing thousands of these, I'll tell. I, I know exactly the questions to hit. Like the first question I asked him, "What's your extension and your motion, and how much pain are you in?" Because mm-hmm. once you get over that initial, you have to be over that initial painful episode to actually do well with the surgery. <laughs> so that extension just means how straight you can get your leg. Yes. Right. Yes. I mean, he had there. me stretching him often and that was just because of his knowledge of things like that but that's where it starts yeah i mean literally it starts from the time you injure your knee uh and then obviously he's taken that motivation on through the surgery and then post-op and i think that what is it about him in particular we do know that patients that seek you out online and travel are typically more motivated and perform better so we do know that 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 in general uh a patient that actually has more self invested into something and that just makes sense, right? So mm-hmm. the more self-invested you are into a procedure or whatever you're doing in life, if it's a podcast or whatever, right, the more you have invested in it, you're going to be more successful. And I think that's he's a, he's a good example of that. And also just tooting his horn even more. Like just from what I've known in Zach in the last you know few years of knowing him, he is one of the strongest-willed human beings, mm-hmm. you know, and sports and, you know, is so important to him. So his in his head getting back as quickly as possible I feel like is doing a lot, you know, for his recovery and being able to like push it to these new lengths without ac- actually hurting himself, you know, because yeah. he wants it well, so that, bad. Well, that's probably an avenue that you're in right now is you're not sure. You guys are a little bit in dark waters. You're like, we don't know how far to push this until we've pushed it too far. And obviously you can't do that. So that's why you're kind of bringing back the rain. So you like right now, you probably don't know how quickly you could actually get him back, even though you already get him back super quick. That's exactly right. So that's why we use MRI, we use CT scans, and we use, like I mentioned, strategic testing at different time points to actually follow those results and then look at the long-term results. And that's the thing, you know, people will call and they'll say, you know, well, why isn't everyone doing this, right? And that the answer to that is, uh, I mean, we developed the technique three and a half, four years ago. So you just you don't have time at this point to say there's five to ten year results. I yeah. mean, it's so just, you're you're the Mark Zuckerberg yeah. of all this, and it's early <laughs> Facebook, baby. <laughs> We're trying. It's a, it's a different world, you know. So yeah. I are think, you allowed to talk about that patient um, who was dunking when he shouldn't have been? Yes, I mean, uh, you know, I think um, we we the one of the first patients we had um, was I get a call and a guy and a guy says, hey, you know. Um, there's a patient of yours that's up here dunking, and <laughs> and I looked and and they were they were very early on in the process, you know. Like, are we talking like weeks or we're talking weeks? <laughs> oh my and god, less than three months, and they weren't you know released or anything, and uh, by any means. And so, I, honestly, that's the first time I sat there and thought to myself, um, you know, maybe there's something to this. Honestly, right? So. Yeah. And I think that was the exciting. There's been several like sentinel moments, you know, throughout this process, and uh, that was certainly one. And uh, that got a lot of recognition. You know, the sporting news article got a ton of a play. Um, but honestly, I say this, and I mean it, not not cliche or anything. You have to stay passionate, and you have to stay focused on the patient that you're doing tomorrow, and that you see in clinic that day. You know, yeah. the people that I saw in clinic today. I mean that. You always have to keep that in mind that that's that's your main goal with the research is to make those folks better, and uh, and so that's what I would say. Yeah, one hundred percent. And I think um, I think one of I think one of the really cool things is is kind of the community that's being built around this because I told you just when when I've been posting that I work with you, like everybody that's worked with you has has had nothing but nothing but a, a real good time. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I was wondering because like you did have the southern accent, and to me that was endearing. That made me want it more. But do you think like some of the other doctors might hear that and and be like, you know how people are with southern accents? So we've Indy, get yeah, your yeah, shoes off. What's going couch. on over there? I realized I was not home for. She a was raised in a barn. That's <laughs> I was raised gracious. in the outback. Jeez, those are uh, leather. 
I'll tell you that uh, when I go and speak and at these events that we do across the country, I stick to the science and, you know, the, the data that we have. Um, I do less of the video and the propaganda type stuff and more to what I know surgeons are going to want to hear. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it just, I mean, it's no different than, you know, it, would I go to New York and be successful or would I go to California and be successful? I mean, you never know until you try that, right? So like you said, some people will be endeared to that, but other people may, no, may I mean, look at it a different way. I will say, though, the, re the response of surgeons, every time that we do a, do a presentation in a city, and we've done tons, there's at least two to three that adopt the technique and have success with it. And so that's a very uh, rewarding thing for me, man. Was it, is it called the lavender technique? Yeah, lavender fertilized ACL. Oh, so, patented. Yeah, it's trademark. 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 Sorry, trademark. Yeah. It, it I don't does, know what it, the difference is. But well, in surgery, it does, it, honestly, that's a question people ask. It does no, it does no good really to yeah. trademark it other than just... You should get like a 10% Venmo nah, just under the I table. Mean, you know, or you can drag... It doesn't work that way. We'll drag it, you know, so. um, no, <laughs> but... Um, no, you are a very smart guy, but it was really funny. So I was about to go, I just got to the hospital, got my little gown on and one of the nurses came in and we just got to talk. I was like, how long have you been working with uh, Dr. Lavender? And she said, I actually went to school with him. And she's like, I thought he was this football playing meathead that didn't know anything in my, uh, <laughs> in my medical class with me. And we had this hard test coming up and she's like, I studied really hard and on my and I got the papers back and I got a C minus and I look over on Meatheads and he's got an A plus. <laughs> so you made a believer out of her. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I worked hard though. I mean, uh, studied hard. Uh, it would, it didn't come nat. It, unlike your athletic abilities, there like, we go. It didn't God, come natural for it. me, right? Yeah. So I had to, I had to work hard for you know my my grades and and everything. Still to this day, so. Um, but, you know, very blessed. I mean, yeah, yeah, well, it paid off, clearly. And I'm funny, you know? I mean, that helps. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, my jokes are great, you know? Do you have any Do you have any ones? I mean, not to put you on the spot. You could just rattle off for us. You know, I mean, I'll tell you a good one that uh, I've <laughs> used from time to time. Here we go. Okay, so I had a patient who came in, and they were like four years out from a knee, and we were looking at them for their shoulder, and, I, and they were just bragging about their knee, and it was just going great. <laughs> and I said, I looked at him. I said, well, you know... I knew if I did that surgery enough times, one was going to go well. <laughs> <laughs> can I, uh, I, can I tell that. you one of my personal favorite Chad Lavender jokes? <laughs> um, you said you were looking at somebody for a um, shoulder freeze. Frozen shoulder. Frozen shoulder. And somebody asked, oh, what should we do? And you said, put a heat pack on it. And that, <laughs> was, that was one of my favorites. And... You know, Zach and Jared will sit here and say that people can't call themselves funny and be funny, but I am part of that club that thinks I'm hilarious, and I also think you're hilarious, so I think that we have Well, let's that cut to common. a club of Vindy being funny. <laughs> I think I'm hilarious. We're I made just, some we good... We just didn't have any. It's not a big deal. I made some great jokes at dinner. <laughs> she made me laugh. And, and, my, and my wife, okay, Barbie. Okay, she wait, made wait, us tell both the joke, laugh. Tell them the joke. You did make some good jokes at dinner. Tell them the joke. I made some good jokes. Um... Oh, it was. I wasn't there. The so. man was on crutches. Um, he was walking. You had to be there. Cool. You're making fun of. Uh, so you're making fun of crippled people, people disabled nope. people. Is that what you're doing? No, I was just telling him that he. Oh, gotcha, made... gotcha. No worries, no worries. It's just. You I made, was just telling you him that telling, he made. Telling him what? Tell him that he made the wrong choice because he wouldn't be on crutches. What? What? If he wouldn't be on crutches, if Dr. Chad Lavender had done his surgery. <laughs> Oh, I'm saying. oh, you were making fun of someone else on crutches. Yes, I was. And said they wouldn't be there if they worked with Doctor. Lavin. Chad Lavender, yes. So you were making fun of crippled Yes, I people. was. Okay. I, I, Injured. Told, I, would I say think crippled. you told better jokes. Huh? There I would say funny jokes <laughs> than that one. Goes, goes, there was something better than that. I like to retract what I said. <laughs> um, no, I make good jokes. Another orders. disclaimer. Oh, God. Look, <laughs> my jokes have to, I'm, I'm an in the moment kind of joke girl. Like, you yeah, gotta yeah, yeah. be there. Well, we're okay. in the moment. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, have you I seen when he tried to come in the stairs? Yeah. When you're coming up the stairs? Oh, yeah, yeah. That wasn't good. We'll have that clip inserted. By the way, you did not stop talking from the minute I saw you to the minute you got in bed and then some. I had things to say. You, like, did not stop talking the entire time you had something to say. At You're some talking point, about Lindsay started, Lowen. You're talking about uh, Rosa, Rosa Parks. Parks. I did an eighth grade presentation on her. And I just, I don't know. I think about her a lot. He said, just came back. He oh, said yeah. that <laughs> if Rosa Parks can do it, I can. And I don't know what that meant, but she inspired me for whatever <laughs> reason to walk up those stairs. What does that even, what? Well, I don't, maybe Lindsay that's Lowen. the secret. Maybe you should have 
all of your patients do a presentation on Rosa Parks beforehand. So when they go under, they have that inspiration. Or just inside. any motivation. Anesthesia really. does crazy things to your <laughs> thought process, obviously. I don't the know. weird thing is, though, is that it didn't do anything too different. It just made him a lot more open. No, it took down my inhibitions. It took yeah, down your inhibitions. So I was very vocal. Because that normally, like, he thinks all the things that he said under anesthesia normally. It's just he has more of a filter to be like, wrong place. There's never he broke wrong down place. that filter. So he was talking about inappropriate things <laughs> in front of his granny. In front of his granny. Trust me, we, we rolled a clip. No worries. <laughs> in front of his granny. You know, one of the things, <laughs> so, you know, on the video you'd posted, so many people were like, hey, it seems like he'd be such a cool guy to hang out with. And that's <laughs> what I've experienced is you guys are like hilarious, like, just what everybody out there thinks as far as how funny you are in person and just down to earth, like honestly, you know. So I think that's great. Yeah. Thank you. That Thank means you. a lot. We're we're the best. And you and you can say it twice if you want, but yeah. um no. Yes. But we genuinely that means a lot. And and you know, what's next for you? You're gonna keep going or are you gonna quit or, or he's just thinking about that's it. You know, you've peaked in uh, in surgery. Clearly, yeah, you was that. can't get better than me. So, yeah. are you done? We've reaching. We've reached um, excellence, yeah. right? You ha- with, with with you coming so in. I think. I think uh, next is. I mean, hopefully, one day a big athlete. It's yeah. kind of changed the trajectory of professional sports. Yeah, and we've I, talked. You know, I mean, we've had some. Pro- we've had professional athletes. I think the the key is, you know, when do you get that big name athlete? Um, but. You know, I I, I don't, uh, just to be honest, you know, that's not my, like I said, that's not my long-term goal or anything. I mean, um, honestly, you wake up every day. I know this sounds crazy, but you wake up every day and you think about what research you're doing that day and, uh, you know, what you need to publish and what can you look at in your results and, and get better with. Yeah. I mean, that's, you know, we continue to try to get better. And I think that's that's what you have to do is continue to try to progress. Um, and I'm, I've been lucky. We didn't talk about this, but. I've been blessed to be at a place like Marshall where they've allowed me to do innovative techniques. Yeah, 100%. You know, they, nobody's came to me and said ever. If someone clamped the door on you early, this might have never. Never would have yeah. happened. That's yeah. that's something that often gets overlooked is that when I took ideas like this, uh, you know, they, they were okay with it, and I think that was a big part of it. I mean, honestly, I, we, we're going to need to – we, we got to get your name out there, so – to and, and that's going to happen once you get the big athlete. So if you see anybody like while you're watching TV that you want us to go tear their ACL, Jared and I will go. <laughs> um, we'll, we'll run out onto go. the field. I think I think Indy. Sh- let's be honest. <laughs> oh, let, talk hey. about this. We got we've got to go back a step here. So in yeah, my professional you. opinion, here's what happened. <laughs> I think you tore your ACL, but when she had the fall, mm-hmm. she completely dismantled the ACL. Do you like seriously blew think it that was it? Do you yeah. seriously think you that was it? You all saw the video. You have the video of the of the surgery, so Do you, you can that see it? that it's like torn completely into shreds. Wait, 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 hold on. I said it. It was, it was shredded. It looked like cod inside. Yes. Wait, stop, like stop, that. stop. Yeah. That was his professional opinion. Is that opinion. actually your professional opinion? That's my professional opinion. Oh, God. You yep. literally blew well, out Well, it's because we were filming a video, and I stepped back, and I fell on his knee. Um, I am the clumsiest person I've ever met in my life, and that's not my fault that How'd I had you poor you? footing. Was it a mirror? Or? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I do want to say this. This is We're trying to keep this podcast PG because you're a doctor. You've got Why a family. We're that? That's because he respects me. Opinion. I'm his patient. Patient is that first. really? I'm just going by what I saw. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Indy. Indy, no S words in the house of the lavenders. We were doing so well. Sorry. We might cut this out because, you know, we're trying to keep this PG. But um, how does it feel? I'll, I'll wait for Jared to get his headphones. I'm good. You can go. <laughs> how does it feel, honestly, to know that you've been inside my knee longer <laughs> than collectively Jared's ever right. been in women? Goodbye. <laughs> and on that note that you heinously ended it on, Sorry um, I would like to thank you? Dr. Chad Lavender for being here and, and um, making my life easier because... If you hadn't done such a good job, I would still be having to deal with him. And that would just, that would suck. And say so, some people that want to maybe work with you someday with their knee or any other, I know you do an assortment of things. Where can they find you? Uh, where can they find your medical group? Yeah, it's, uh, ch- if you just search Chad Lavender MD on, uh, you know, Twitter or Instagram. Uh, we'll have it on the screen and yeah. in uh, the description. In the description. And, you know, that's the thing we didn't talk about is it's amazing how many surgeons from other countries and patients from other countries. We live in such a world. I mean, obviously you're from a long, you know, way away is long flight, but um, with social media, it's global now. I mean, mm-hmm. surgeons and patients get on social media and, and seek you out 
like that and uh so it's it's been an interesting process and i think uh so it's easy to find okay perfect know. as long as we got place for people to find you i'm sure you'll be doctor of the year next year you'll never talk to us again but it was nice <laughs> to at least have you for this moment we, hey, we, I, it was Hall of Fame. I was West Virginia Hall of Fame this year. Oh, so, so, so there we go. Oh, we, well, that's how I know you're she, down there. Barbie just sent, she just she just celebrated. Uh, what was it last weekend? So that was a big deal for us, man. Come on, oh, wow. that is wow. big, goodness that gracious. Is really, that is a pretty. I big didn't know deal. we had royalty. <laughs> <here. laughs> and happy uh, again, happy eleventh year anniversary. Happy eleventh year. Yes. Happy um, anniversary. I wouldn't want to celebrate it any other way, right? <laughs> right. Uh, except for with wife on the couch and talking to someone else. <laughs> but um, if you stay till the end, um, just just uh, comment on Doctor Lavender's Instagram. Just tell him thank you from me and all of us, and screenshot us, uh, DM it to me, so I know you did it. That way, I know you stayed till the end, and because uh, he's really helped me out, and I can't thank you enough. And the quality, look at this handshake. Thank you guys so much for joining us for this week's episode of Dropouts. I'm Indiana. That's J Bear Music. This is Dr. Chad Lavender, and this is the Zach Justice. Thing to ever well, Speak of evolution. Like uh, make sure to go follow us on Instagram at Dropouts Pod, Stand and um, make sure to go thank Dr. Chad Lavender. So thank you so much, and we'll see you guys next week for another episode. I'm going to of run Dropouts. sprints. Bye. Oh, no. I don't. I don't have the outro music, but. Do, 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 do. Do, do.